Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and I wanted to run through some different ships that are available to you in the cargo category to kind of help you pick the best ship if you're looking to be kind of a merchant or a cargo hauler in the Persistent Universe. Now we'll run through some of the different priced options, and we're going to make sure to include some that are currently available on sale to you right now, so if you're ready to get in now, you're not waiting for a limited sale to get one. Um, and if you haven't stayed up to date on this game so far, it's worth pointing out two things. And the first of which is that ships come and go on what are known as concept sales, meaning that they're available for a short period of time, uh, and then they're available for sale again at a later point. Uh, and two, that all of these ships are going to be able to be purchased in the Persistent Universe with in-game currency. But you do need to have at least one ship with a game package in order to actually play the game. So let's go ahead and get started with the starter category, and there we really only have a few options to choose from, and those would be the Mustang Alpha or the Aurora CL. Um, now both of these are part of their own variant families and the dedicated haulers of both, uh, and the Alpha can currently be purchased for $30, where the Aurora CL comes in at $45. Now looking at both of these ships, if you're looking for the cheapest option to get into the game, then I will just go ahead and stop you and say grab the Mustang Alpha and call it a day. That being said, cheapest is rarely the best, and I think it's worth noting here, um, you know, as we kind of talk through these. Now, after flying both of these ships, the Mustang family is just fragile. You know, they break apart and lose functionality pretty damn quick. Um, you're not going to be doing a, a whole lot of combat in a ship designed to haul goods, um, but you do want to be able to survive long enough to escape an attack if that so happens upon yourself. Now, the Aurora has a kind of a proven ability to be a little bit tankier. And, you know, especially when compared to something like the Mustang Alpha, but you're sacrificing a power plant size and some armor capabilities to be able to haul the extra cargo in the CL over the other Aurora line ships. The stats page indicates that the Mustang can haul 10 cargo units, whereas the Aurora comes in with 23, and they both haul this cargo in a store all box under the tail of the ship. Greyheaded Gamer did a great comparison of both of these ships in his Star Citizen Island series, so I'm going to try and remember to post a link to that video in the description where you can see the Aurora being able to fit a larger box than the uh, Mustang Alpha. And the reason I bring that up is because, you know, where the stats page is often wrong, common sense approaches like Greyheaded Gamers do a good job of showing likely ending points. So for me, and my recommendation to you, I would say go with, with, with any time with cargo. You know, more is generally better. And the $15 difference between um, what you get with the CL, you're basically more than doubling your overall cargo capacity, making this a better choice for a similar price. Now once we get past these, the prices start to jump pretty significantly. Um, but there is one option that I love to recommend as often as possible, and that's the Avenger. Now, the Avenger is typically a bounty hunting or a combat ship, and at $60, it does those jobs pretty well. However, the reason that I want to bring this up to you today is that currently it has holding cells for prisoners in the back of the ship, but they can be removed, as we've seen from you know some of the different update images that they've been giving us, and that's going to be able to make this a, kind of an interesting ship. You know, I already think it's well-rounded, and if you're looking for a decently priced jack-of-all-trades ship, then I think this is a good point for you to kind of jump in. Now, it carries less than an Aurora right now as far as its cargo capacity, but I would expect its number to increase drastically in the next update. You know, it's much faster, it's much more nimble, and it's just more powerful overall, not to mention it's just a lot better looking ship. So while you may not want to jump on that ship at this point, uh, it's probably worth keeping an eye on it and just keeping an eye on the updates that we get, especially as new variants are released. It's certainly not the best cargo option out there, but for the versatility and the price as compared to something like the CL, I think it's at least worth a look. After that point is where we really start to get into the true haulers category. And here's where we start with, you know, the kind of talking about things like the Freelancer and the Cutlass Black. Now, the Cutlass comes in at an even $100 and carries 33 cargo, while the Freelancer is $110 and carries 52 cargo. Well, if cargo is your game, then I think the Freelancer wins hands down in most situations between these two ships. The $10 difference is pretty negligible overall, and that's a pretty hefty increase in cargo. Add to that that you get a larger power plant, a lighter weight, larger engines, uh, and a better shield, and I think you've almost got a perfect cargo ship, at least for the size. Uh, it's interesting to compare the Cutlass and the Freelancer because I think the Cutlass is probably the most likely suspect to be able to try and rob you um, of whatever is in your Freelancer. The Cutlass is kind of like an Avenger in a way, and that it kind of fits into a lot of roles well, um, but it's certainly not the master of really anything. 
And if this is your price range, take the Freelancer. You know, it, it's built with alien technology into it, and you should be able to survive attacks better and even deal some damage on your own. The weapon systems on the Freelancer are actually surprisingly large, bringing 12 missiles, 4 size 2 weapons, uh, and a man turret. The Freelancer also finds a nice place in that it's not too big, meaning that while it may not fit through every jump point, it's certainly not going to be restricted as some of the other larger uh, boys that we're talking about on the market. Um, there's another Freelancer option to discuss, though, and that's the Max variant, which is designed specifically to haul extra cargo by sacrificing weaponry. When we look at the stat sheet, we see that it actually seems to have larger weapons and just less missiles, but again, don't read too much into that. Focus on the description of the ship, as that's typically the essence that CIG tries to capture through their further balancing and changes to the ships. Now, the Max um, is basically the chunky variant with the same length and the same height, but coming in at about 4 meters wider in the center. The cargo capacity more than doubles, and we see additional engines being mounted in an increased power plant uh, to power those engines. It does have a size smaller shield, but it's not so small that you're going to be a sitting duck either. The Max is $30 more than the stock Freelancer, and I would say if you can easily swing it, you're probably better off with a Max uh, than just the stock Freelancer. Generally, more cargo means more profit, assuming you're selling at a profit. However, you can sell ships in-game to fund purchases and new ones, so... Maybe you want to start with the stock freelancer, use it to earn some credits, and then trade that uh, you know trade that in uh, you know for the max. You know, I think regardless, you want to get your hands on the max if the freelancer line is what you're looking for. But you do have a couple different ways to get there. <clears throat> now, up to this point, we've talked about ships that are pretty capable of being flown by yourself. So anything prior to this note right here, I would feel comfortable taking out without the help of friends or NPCs. The reason I mention that is because more people or more NPCs mean more mouths to feed. So if you're going to have you know, a player load your cargo or man your turret, you're most likely going to need to pay them unless they're just a really good friend. NPCs are always going to need to be paid though. So while you may end up making, you know, the um, you might take the majority of the profits because it's your ship, you're paying for the gas, you're, it's your ship that you're risking, um, you're not going to take all of the profit. So as we jump up, we, we have things like the Constellation Taurus, which sacrifices weaponry, the snub nose fighter, and as the description states, just the overall bells and whistles from the standard Constellation line. If you've seen a normal Constellation, the interior is pretty sharp, and with the rework that's coming, it's going to be really great on the inside. The Taurus, though, almost looks like a used ship, um, but ultimately that's not what really matters, especially as they've just been kind of showing off some of the different states as things are going to age. I think what you get in hauling capabilities, the Taurus is just at $150 carrying 243 units of cargo is probably the best value in the game and gets my overall recommendation based on the overall cap capabilities of the ship. You know, that comes with a caveat, though, is the crew capacity is at four. Now keep in mind, you know, the, the max crew size isn't the required crew, but that's basically the number of jobs available on the ship. So we're probably seeing things like a pilot, a co-pilot, a top turret operator, and a flex spot for, you know, cargo management or shield or radar operations. I think realistically, you could probably get by with two on this ship and be fairly competent, but running a solo, like running solo on a ship of this size is probably a dangerous proposition um, in a situation you probably don't want to be in. So if you've got at least one buddy uh, and the money to spend, this is where I would recommend you land, as I really do feel you get a lot for your money. So while that's the end of my recommendations for what's currently available for purchase at the moment, there's other ships that have been on concept sale and I think are really good fits for this role, so I want to run through those in case you're catching this video later in development cycle and want to pick something else up. So we'll start smaller again with the MISC Reliant, which was initially sold for $50 and is being labeled as kind of a mini hauler capable of taking 30 cargo units. It's kind of a semi-starter ship with a two-man max crew, but it's certainly capable of being operated solo. It's unique in that it comes equipped with GN technology and has been described as very technologically advanced little ship, and it can fly in kind of an upright configuration, almost like the Slave 1 from uh, Star Wars. Now, I would personally take the Reliant over the Aurora CL as it has better weaponry, and I would expect it to be much more agile while being able to still carry more cargo. The price difference is pretty damn small overall, and I think you get a much more capable ship. Now, past that, we get into the whole series, which comes in A through E configurations, and is really what most would kind of consider to be the dedicated haulers of the Persistent Universe. 
You know, the series ranges drastically in prices from $60 to $550 and finds an interesting design through kind of hauling the cargo boxes externally. Now, the cargo capacity also ranges from 48 units on the small end to a whopping 98,000 on the high end. So of these ships, I think they all have a lot of merit, but I think the whole sea kind of fits that sweet spot in the middle ground where it has a reasonable crew size and it still carries a crap load of cargo at 4,600 units. While that pales in comparison to the whole ease capacity, um, you, you have far less operating cost at a much more reasonable price. And you're likely to be a much lower target for thieves than something like a top of the line whole E. Now, I think the whole E is an incredible ship. But unless you've got a ton of escorts and an organization to help man the ship, it's probably not the best option for an individual player. The other thing to consider is that unless you're actually contracted to take goods from point A to point B, you're most likely buying your cargo to sell that elsewhere for a profit. That means the larger the ship, the larger the cost to buy the cargo, and that's a lot of risk to take on. The whole A and the whole B are good options for single players, and they're really only a single person ship anyways. The whole B gets my recommendation over the A though, as the increase in car cargo carrying capacity for a $30 difference is absolutely worth the increase in price. After the whole series, we get into the Banu Merchantman, which was released for a limited sale, you know, kind of a few times now, and it's a really cool ship. I think the overall purpose of the Merchantman is not only to just be able to haul cargo, but also to be able to set up shops in space to kind of run commerce operations as like a little storefront, which makes it pretty unique compared to these other trade ships just taking stuff from point A to point B. Add to that kind of some rumors of it being able to, you know, run blockades effectively and heavily loaded with juicy alien technology. And this ship really is just badass. It does come with a higher price tag, though, at $250, at least when it was up for sale last, but it can carry up to 5,000 cargo units, which is really high. I think this ship, though, is going to be kind of that pinnacle for a lot of players that are in, uh, you know, cargo operations. And it's certainly something dedicated cargo haulers are going to want in their fleet, even if it's just earned in-game over buying unlimited sales. There is one very limiting factor to the Banu Merchantman, though, and that is that it comes with an eight-person max crew, which is the highest of the ships we're talking about today. And that's a lot of cost to take on, but makes it a good ship for larger organizations who want to play well together. Another kind of interesting ship to talk about is actually the uh, Caterpillar, and that's going to be... There's almost... I don't know, very modular, very bizarre, Drake interplanetary ship um, that's almost like the uh, the barge version of space. And this thing actually gets a lot of flexibility from the fact that you can change out the modules to your certain needs. Now, if we're focusing specifically on cargo, it has the ability to carry 512 pieces of cargo. And that's actually quite a bit, and it's actually pretty high. And I think once this actually gets released and we get more information about it, which I think we're supposed to get pretty soon, it's going to be a really good competitor for something like the Constellation Taurus. Now, it's not going to be the high quality that we're kind of expecting to see out of the RSI ships. I think it's probably going to be more kind of like that pirate mishmash version of a ship. But I think from the cargo carrying capacity and the flexibility you get from it, the Caterpillar's got to be one of the ships that I'm most excited to get more information about. And is something that if you're interested in cargo, should certainly be keeping an eye on coming up soon. And then the last two that I want to hit on real quick here are two that aren't really dedicated to commerce. And those are the Starfarer and the Retaliator. Both of which are designed for other purposes, with one being a fuel hauler and the other being a bomber. Um, but they do have flexibility built into them. The recent release of the Retaliator modules comes with two cargo bays to replace the bomb bays. That's actually my personal cargo setup, because I'm going to be, you know, typically a more combat-oriented person. But the modularity of the Retaliator gives me some flexibility to play with. The Starfarer has a very large carrying capacity, and while that's normally kind of going to be in the realm of carrying fuel, which you could certainly do and make a good profit, you should be able to retrofit the platform to be able to bring solid cargo along with you. Now, I don't think it's the best hauling option by any means, but I think it has a lot of versatility, and overall, I really value that in a ship, and I think it's something for you to consider. So that's pretty much it. You know, there's a lot of ships that can do this job on different scales, but some certainly excel where others don't quite match up. So to recap, you starters out there are probably going to find a lot of value in ships like the Aurora CL. While those of you just wanting overall, you know, capacity um, and some flexibility are going to enjoy something like the Freelancer. Now, for those of you willing to get up to that $150 price tag, you're needing to really decide between a smaller crew size but effective Freelancer Max 
or if you have the man or NPC power to crew up the Constellation Taurus, because if you can, you're in a better place with the Taurus. There's plenty of other options to keep in mind, you know, especially as the anniversary sales come back up. But for now, those are my primary recommendations as to what you can buy effective on 10-15-2015. So if you have any questions about any of this, please put them in the comments. Or if you have different opinions, put them in the comments. Um, also, let me know if you'd rather see a picking the right pirate ship next or picking the right combat ship next, as we'll kind of continue this series going forward. And one final last note, and that's regards, or in regards to the referral codes that we've uh, seen recently released by CIG. And I've seen a lot of comments on my channel recently spamming, basically trying to get people to use those codes to get the referral bonuses. I'm just telling you right now, those are going to be deleted if I see them, so please don't waste your time putting them in the comments. For those of you wanting a code to earn the 5,000 UEC, I'll have mine in the description for you to go in and find and share with your friends accordingly. But I don't want them clogging up the comment section, as I've seen recently. It's been kind of a chore to clean things up. So you're not going to hear me talking about this or spamming my code on the channel either, primarily because I'm not happy about the way they went about doing this, um, but that's probably a discussion for another day. So that's it for now. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and take care. <music>